This edition of Italy TV is sponsored by Colavita, extra virgin olive oil. And Cheerio chopped tomatoes. Who doesn't love pizzas? Pizza originally comes from the Greeks who actually used to do a flat bread. And then the Neapolitan in the 18th century changed it, adding the tomatoes they just discovered from America. There are many few types of pizza, like Romana pizza, Sicilian pizza, and Neapolitan pizza. Today we're gonna discover the Neapolitan pizza, which is the original one. So, Georgia, tell us a little bit more how you make your pizza. Why is it different from your father? Or if it's the same? Or was he a good teacher for you? Yes, but it's just the same, just like my finger is a little bit small than my father. Every single pizza is different, so you make something special for the customer. If you have a good flower, the flower, and they, if you have a good machine, you can make it everywhere you want in the United States. That's no problem. Many blogs that talk about scientific, and I tell all the time, guys, I'm no chemic, I'm just pizza maker. I try to be authentic Neapolitan pizza maker. Emily is American and she has a passion making pizza, which is kind of like unique. Yes. How like your passion for pizza was born? You know, it's just a, such a simple food, and pizza especially, there's just such a lasting tradition there that's pretty incredible, and you're, you're just so naturally drawn to it. Takeaway wasn't invented by the American, but by Neapolitan, and this is the old form, how you carry the pizza around, right? Yes, of course. They put like the pizza like that, and down it was like uh, wood, something like that, and they put the pizza, ready cut, close it, and go around to every in the street and sell the pizza. Is that heavy? Let's see. Alessandro is a general manager of Pizza Arte. Pizza Arte is kind of an interesting name for pizza, pizza and art. Why? Um, basically, the idea is to combine art and, and food in a, in a very laid-back environment, and that's why we do exhibition every every two months. We bring in different artists that gives a different feeling and energy to uh, to the room. And also, I heard that you are a team of people from Campania, so like all around the region, the created the Neapolitan pizza. Yes, we are all from the Campania region, from Avellino, Napoli, Capri. It comes from the roots, um, from things that we know since we were little kids. It's easier for us to promote it and to be passionate about it. Salsiccia Frarelli is one of the most older pizza than uh, uh, we have in Naples and uh, one of the most particular. It's made with uh, sausage, uh, put in the oven and uh, topped with uh, provola. Then it's like uh, smoked mozzarella. Pizza is amore, pizza is love, pizza puts people together. But not just in Manhattan, but also in Brooklyn. Let's go to Williamsburg. Giulio is the owner and the pizza maker of Forcella restaurant which are in Brooklyn as well as Manhattan on Bauer and Park Avenue and your specialty is making like fried pizza. Yeah, uh, that's what makes us famous. So it's principally a fried dough and then it's topped and sauced as a regular margarita and finished it in the wood fire oven. <laughs> How would you describe the taste of like a fried pizza versus the regular pizza? 
Uh, well, the dough for the effect of the caramelization of the sugar of the flour will taste a little bit sweeter, just like a zeppole, but it's going to be so a combination of the sweet of the like zeppole-like dough and the saltiness and flavor of mozzarella, tomato and basil on top of it, so it's really good. <laughs> How many pizza did you try? How about the Neapolitan pizza? Well, today I had plenty, and we learned something more about the pizza, the mozzarella, the dough, the levitation, and the oven. Did I make you hungry? I'm a casa italiana, Zeri Limarimo at New York University, and I'm going to launch a few segments. Let's start with our food and wine expert, Charles and Michel Cicolone, and see what they're eating and drinking for us today. Sicilian caponata, it's a traditional recipe, and the only thing we, let's say we add, is a little bit of a lemon zest and a toasted pine. I'm Michelle Ciccoloni. And I'm Charles Ciccoloni. And today, Chef Matteo Bergamini is making for us one of his specialties. It is called caponata, and it comes from the western part of Sicily. This is a wonderful, typical Sicilian dish that contains all of the vegetables that Sicilians grow so beautifully. Eggplant, tomatoes, onions, celery, green olives are all part of this dish and of course there are many variations and it's all made sweet and sour with a little bit of vinegar and some sugar. Now I know this is going to be something that Charles is, is one of his favorite dishes. What do you think would go with it? Yes, well I think uh, insolia would be the perfect grape to go with this dish. Insolia is a white wine grape which comes from the western part of Sicily. Even today it is grown uh, all over the island. It is known in uh, Tuscany as uh, Ansanica, but uh, it is uh, really a Sicilian grape. It's in fact one of the grapes that goes into making uh, Marsala. And uh, insolia is used as a blending uh, grape with other grapes, but I like it uh, by itself. Uh, and I think that it has wonderful uh, flavors and aromas, uh, which are very uh, nice. Uh, you can uh, taste the citrus, you can taste the herbs, and it has a certain nuttiness, which would make it a great combination with this particular dish. Well, I'm gonna try some wine. And then I'd like to see how it goes with the caponata. I'm sure it's gonna be great. You know, I read somewhere that caponata was De evolved as a way to preserve vegetables during the winter because of the sugar and the vinegar. You're absolutely right. Now I'm Sicilian, so I should know that. Mmm, <laughs> so good. It's a great combination with the wine. I, I just think it, it's perfect. It's I couldn't a perfect have, combination. Yeah, I couldn't have come up with some, anything better. Thank you so much. Lovely and to see you. Ciao. For iMovie, let's talk to Stefano Albertini. He's suggesting us what to watch. For iNew York, let's chat with Maurizio Molinari from La Stampa and see what he has something for us about his New York. Today I would like to talk to you about a brand new film by Giuseppe Tornatore the Academy Award-winning director of Cinema Paradiso. But the last film by Tornatore that I've seen just a few days ago in Italy, it just opened, The Best Offer, blew me away and has nothing to do with anything you've ever seen by Giuseppe Tornatore or by any other director. I would say that first and foremost, 
the best offer. It's a love story, but it's a love story that hides a thriller. And as with any thriller, I'm very embarrassed because I feel that the more I tell you, the more I might spoil the film for you. And that's the last thing I want to do. I just want to mention that it's a film with an international cast headed by Jeffrey Rush, Academy Award winner with Shine, and Donald Sutherland, and has the music by Ennio Morricone. Extraordinary photography. It's not your typical Italian film. You will barely recognize where you are. The film was shot part in Trieste, part in Prague, part in Vienna, part in Parma, part in many other locations. So the city where it actually takes place is not easily identifiable. The protagonist, Jeffrey Rush, is an art connoisseur, art dealer, and auctioneer with some manias, including gloves. He always wears gloves. He never touches anything with his bare hands, except for his beloved paintings. And at some point, this very strange man falls in love and the story unravels from there. Again, it's not only a love story, but love is really the central part of it. And the very interesting thing about The Best Offer is a film that stays with you way beyond, way after you have left the movie house. For about two weeks, I kept thinking about different details of this cinema. And even the things that were more strange and more difficult to interpret, at the end, they all made sense. Keep your eyes open. The best offer is coming soon to the US, even if it does not yet have a precise release date. I am sure you will enjoy it as much as I did. second term of Barack Hussein and Obama. There were a lot of stories, details, surprises in the last election. I had the privilege to cover them, to travel with him. But one big surprise came from New York. He took 81% of the vote in this city. No one did the same in the last 114 years. What happened? Why the New Yorkers believed in him and voted for him in such a huge number. Now, my idea is that the, the big changes that he's trying to implement in America, they have a lot to do with the identity of this city. The idea that the gay rights are the new frontier of the battles for the human and the civil rights. I mean, New York is the first place where this actually did happen. Then the equal pay for women. This is also a New York story. And now the reform of the immigration. We know that he wants to do it. He didn't do it in the first time, but he wants to do it now. Will be legal, respecting the law. But if you are an illegal and you never broke the law, you will be allowed to be, to become a citizen. This is also a New Yorker message. Now, the big question that we are facing is if Obama is following a New Yorker track for his second term. And, and if this is the reason, because so many New Yorkers are trusting him, will it be possible that in 2016 will be a man from New York to run for president, maybe the first Italian American with really the possibility to win? This is the big issue that I believe we're going to discuss in the coming months uh, that belongs to us as belongs to New York in the name of Andrew Cuomo. For our focus, we did something different this time. We had the chance to meet Subsonica, Manarino and Negrita, one singer and two pop groups who came to New York to promote their albums. Siamo nati tanto, tanti anni fa, nel 94 siamo usciti col primo album 
e da lì di, di, di strada e di avventure ne sono capitate tante. Abbiamo iniziato come gruppo da, da club, insomma suonando ovunque capitasse, ovunque la musica ci portasse, eh, facendoci un po' le ossa, diciamo come succede a tante band, attorno a casa, poi piano piano allargando il raggio di azione. Eh, per poi uscire, come diceva Mac, nel 1994 col primo disco, da lì è andata sempre meglio e abbiamo fatto ormai nove album. Negli ultimi album, a parte l'ultimissimo, insomma, il Sud America e quindi i ritmi latini in generale che, possano, che siano insomma, di, di stampo ispanico piuttosto che giamaicano, così hanno rivoluzionato un po' un, un sound nostro che, aveva, che cominciava a mostrare il fianco, eravamo insomma un po' in crisi di, di identità musicale, quindi questa, questa ventata di, di musica, di aria fresca, di colori, di suoni, di, di culture diverse ha fatto sì che in Negrita vivessero la seconda, una seconda vita, quindi una seconda fase meravigliosa della nostra carriera. Diciamo che un po' New York sta diventando familiare, ormai venire qua è un po' come, come andare in una seconda casa. E... Cosa non mi piace, non lo so, forse ci siamo stati sempre troppo poco per scoprire cosa non ci piace. Hi to everybody, we are Subsonica, we're from Italy. We are an electronic band, a kind of pop, it's a mixture between pop and electronic music, our music. La musica elettronica ti permette di utilizzare un linguaggio eh, molto vicino alla, alla pista da ballo, quindi alla dance, eh, e però ti permette anche di scrivere delle canzoni nella quale raccontare il mondo da, dalla quale provieni. Un'esperienza diversa rispetto all'Italia perché in Italia naturalmente le venue nelle quali si suona sono molto più grandi, invece qui il fatto di ritornare a fare, a fare club e quindi a vivere il palco più da vicino insieme alle persone che vengono a sentirti per noi è un po' un ritorno alle origini. Negli spazi grossi è sempre un po' complicato riuscire a, a, a divertirsi a pieno per un gruppo come noi che è nato nel club in posti come questo. Quindi è soprattutto una sfida e uno stimolo, visto che ormai è 15 anni che siamo insieme, quindi è come cominciare un'avventura nuova e vedere che cosa porta. Il ritmo non ha bisogno di essere tradotto, viene capito da qualsiasi tipo di, di cultura, eh, ti trovi di fronte al palco. Alessandro Mannarino, e sono un cantautore, scrivo canzoni, e mi ispiro alla musica popolare italiana e non. Svegliatevi italiani, brava gente, qua la truffa è grossa e congegnata, lavoro intermittente, solo un emittente, pure l'aria pura va pagata. Credo che nelle mie canzoni ci sia un, un doppio registro, cioè quello proprio che si attiene alla canzone di per sé, per cui tu ascoltatore puoi ascoltare la storia e basta. E poi quell'altro in cui si nascondono delle critiche alla società. Soldi pesanti, loro colato, questo paese si è indebitato, soldi di più. Soldi d'argento sono rimasti sul pavimento e la poesia cosa leggera persa nel vento si è fatta preghiera si spreca la luce si passa la cera so Let's see the interesting events that we covered for you last week and give you some suggestions for the upcoming week Loredana Tisminetsky, 
Margherita Tisminiecki, Adele Todesco, Alberto Leone Todesco, Angela Todesco. Daniele, Contremoli Violetta. While in Europe this day, which marks the liberation of Auschwitz, has been celebrated and given ample space with many, many different kinds of um, cultural manifestations. In New York, this is a relatively unknown date to celebrate this event. Uh, I believe very strongly that this is a kind of event that should be advertised and known about, particularly in a city like New York, where so many families of victims of the Holocaust have chosen to live and where the international community is so sensitive. This uh, kind of uh, commemoration we do uh, every year, uh, it's important uh, because it's uh, the testimony of uh, our engagement in preserving the memory of what uh, happened during the Second World War. It's a day for people of New York to let the people uh, in, in Italy and all of the people of Italian culture and heritage to know that we will never forget the tragedy that happened almost you know, 50, 60 years ago uh, and let them know that their losses are felt by all of us. The question is always why do we come back here in front of the Consulate General of Italy every year on January 26 or around that date to celebrate the Day of Memory. Apparently and from the reactions that we see to this day in several parts of the world and in particular in Italy, yes, we do need to come back and remember. We need to come back and read these names to remember the identities of these people and also to remember the responsibilities that we hold collectively as a nation. I think today is a very important day because especially for us young people you really understand that this is not something abstract that we're remembering. We're remembering something that happened to real people and the key to preventing it is really just remembering it. And so we've done this for many years now, and I think every year it's a very valuable experience. It's a very important day because this was a tragedy that should never be forgotten. Brothers and sisters going against each other, turning each other in and out to save their own uh, nose, for lack of better words. And just because of a couple of uh, crazy people, a lot of people lost their life for a... For, uh, for a, for a political view that didn't make any sense. The importance of this day for young people is that they need to remember. We must never forget the horrors that took place. And unfortunately, they did. And with Remembrance Days like this, we can draw the attention to it. At the Italian American Museum, we do exhibitions also to remind people of the struggles that Italians and non-Italians have had during this, during this time of crisis. What we do here is critical to remind people what happened and the atrocity, the horror that happened to these people who were innocent people, who were, who were, uh, who were killed um, in the most horrible way. I really like the idea of reading the names because then we are not only talking about what happened, but we are really f can feel with every name and every person, something real, what happens to each family. History must teach us not to do and not to repeat what we have done wrong in centuries past, in decades past, in the last century. And this, the day of remembrance and the knowledge of the real history is fundamental for the young people as well. It happened not too many years ago, and I think it's important to always remember that many kids our age passed away and we're tortured, and it's always remember. It's re important to remember that we're very lucky. Ara Lazar, Arditi Alberto Abramo. Exhibition Kaziat. Visionary artists from Puglia, Italy, presents works of ink on paper, video art, and installations. Kaziat's contemporary vision is that of the word filtered through the lens of imagination.
Exhibition, Paolo Ventura, photographs from three series of Ventura's work, which tell stories of his invented words in a luminous, magical and imaginative way. Exhibition, a picture gallery in the Italian tradition of the Quadreria, 29 paintings and drawings from the 18th and 19th century European masters, examples of Italian figurative tradition which illustrates landscapes and the society of the time. This edition of Italy TV was brought to you by European Flavors, promoting organically grown fruits and vegetables in the best European tradition. And Baci Perugina Chocolates, say I love you the Italian way.